welcome to Technically Speaking from EBR's EdTech team. We invite you to join us on this podcast every other week to talk techie with us. Welcome to our first podcast. We are your hosts, Brittany Davenport. And I'm Nikki Washington. We're excited to bring you this podcast every two weeks. So stay tuned. We're going to start off each one of our shows with a little tech tea to keep you in the know of all the trending news and tech. So let's get into this week's tech tea. What's going on with these TikTok trends that I'm seeing trending over the news and everything? What's going on with them, Ms. Davenport? I think I saw they had a whole calendar of events. So it started in August and it's going to go all the way until May. Last month, they were hitting the teacher. I think the month before that, they were vandalizing the schools and vandalizing bathrooms. It is getting out of control. And you know what? I was looking at the news the other day. There's a one young lady. She's trending. She actually went through with the trend and she actually assaulted her teacher and I was just shocked. I, you know, I thought that was a little bit far with this trend that the students were doing this month. And I just knew that they would not try that because, you know, I think that's just a bit much. But there is a student that I saw on the news that actually went through with it and she hit the teacher. I How do you feel that. about that? I saw it. I like I saw when um, the news came out with that. She was actually arrested, though. She was 18 years old and she mm-hmm. actually got arrested for hitting her teacher because she's following these TikTok trends. And I guess that's what's going on with the TikTok trends. The students are following these trends. They're trying to see how many likes they can get for it, hearts or whatever, and go viral. I think that's the big thing with uh, this generation of students. They wanna do things to go viral, but they need to change it up. Go viral for doing the right thing. Helping an elderly person cross the street, doing something right, getting caught doing something right at school. I wish some kids would change the trend. And I understand it's fun. They're having fun. They're kids. But there's a limit to your fun. When you start endangering adults and other students, I think it's gone too far. I agree. So teachers, if they want to stay on top of these things, one thing they can do is, as an educator, they can join social media platforms. So if you don't have a TikTok account and you are an educator right now, go get one. It is very easy to get. You just go to TikTok, fill out the information. It's free. You don't have to post on it if you don't want to. You can just be a lurker. But if you are that type of person that wants to go in and post, that is up to you. You are an adult and you can do whatever you want to. But you can also just go in and watch. Start following people. Start following these um, influencers on the social media platform so that you can keep up with the culture that you're teaching right now. That's a great idea. And I highly recommend you doing that as well. I did know what you said. I have a question, Ms. Davenport. So what can we do to help support our teachers with actually teaching our students? Because I think that is where we're dropping the ball. The students don't know that they should not be doing these things. So how can we support our teachers with teaching the students how to actually act and behave online? Because we have to teach them. Maybe no one is teaching them and it's our responsibility to to do it. You're right. Um, I know at the beginning of the year, especially when I was a teacher, I remember we focused really hard on teaching digital citizenship. Went hard those first two, three weeks but then it kind of falls off. So teachers need to start teaching digital citizenship throughout the year. Don't put it off. Don't do it just in the beginning of the year and then forget about it because these trends are going on all year long. So these students need to be aware of all of those digital citizenship rules and procedures that they need to follow. Um, Do you remember teaching digital citizenship where you were a teacher, Ms. Washington? I do. I used to teach it. I really, because I was the last position I had was a computer lab teacher. So I always embedded it. And I didn't take all of my lesson, five minutes, two minutes, three minutes. And even when I had teachable moments, when you had something going on inside of the actual classroom that started on social media, that was a teachable, teachable moment. So it can stop right there and actually have a digital citizenship lesson. So I know teachers, we are crunched for time. We don't have any, but 
this is an important skill that we we have to find the time to actually teach our students because if we let it go and let it go and it trickles into your classroom you're going to take more than those five and ten minutes addressing the issue right. in your classroom anyway so just go ahead and build it into your instruction because if you don't know it's very important and we want to make sure our students are being great citizens not just a regular citizen but a digital citizen because they have to know that the things that you do online you can't just delete them and they go away they need to know that they have something called a digital footprint whatever you do online is there once you put it out there and you hit send it's there i used to always tell my students think before you send right. because if you send it you can't take it back you can delete it yeah you could delete it from your screen but someone <laughs> else could still see it on the media and that always stuck with my students i think and i even had a sign up in a computer lab to tell them think before you send or post is it is it gonna is it something that i'm gonna get in trouble for is it nice is it polite is it rude think before you send because those things will come back to hunt you now people can um your employers can go and check your social media and they can decide based off just what you had on social media if I want to hire you have you ever heard of people doing that because I've ran into a few people that said my employer looked at my social media and they decided to um, employ someone else and I would yeah. hate that to be our students so we need also, to, mm -hmm. I'm sorry it can also <laughs> it can mm -hmm. also um hurt them when they're trying to fill out those college applications because I know a lot of our students they want to get into college but those college those people that are looking at college applications they are also looking at this these social media platforms that they are posting on so we need to make sure that we're teaching them how to be good digital citizenships early elementary middle school so that by the time they are applying for college it doesn't come back to haunt them so true so this is why it's very important to take moments like this these TikTok trends turn them into teachable moments teach the students the right way we understand their kids they want to have fun but your fun has to have a limit on it because there are rules that must be followed and we can't go overboard so we we encourage you to make sure that you you know educate your students on how to act online and you may say well you're saying all of that, Nikki and Brittany, but how do I do that? <laughs> so there are some resources that you can actually utilize. For instance, we have Common Sense Media. They have all of those resources and lessons already created for you ready to go. So depending on what topic you want to hit that day, or maybe something happened on your class, like in your class, like cyberbullying, you can go and filter and search for that lesson to address the issue that's going on in your class. So you can pick and choose and dissect what you want to do with your students, but we highly recommend that you do it daily. And we'll leave the, the description in the description. We'll leave the Common Sense Media link there for you. Any other resources that they can utilize, Ms. Bush? Well, if they are Nearpod teachers and they love using Nearpod, Nearpod actually has a whole library of ready-to-go lessons that they can just go in and kind of browse through. And just like you said on Common Sense Media, find that topic that they want to teach for the day, launch that live Nearpod lesson to make it more interactive for their students and just go with it. And we're also going to go and drop in that Nearpod.com library in our um, notes in the description below. And one last thing I guess we would like to say is just stay woke, stay vigilant as a teacher, as Ms. Davenport, Ms. Bush, you may hear me say Davenport <laughs> or Bush, but she's both. I'm so both. <laughs> stay woke as to what's going on with your students. And even as a parent, if you have children, teenagers, kids, you have to stay up to date with what's going on on social media because the students now have access to so many things beyond what they can handle the little hands and eyes can handle so they have access to the whole world on these devices so stay woke stay tuned to what's going on so you are up ahead of what's coming and you can prevent it and you can have these conversations with your students as parents and teachers to prevent this and keep everyone safe and out of trouble yes i agree before we get into our first topic today, the EdTech team will introduce themselves. So let's go ahead and introduce the team. Hi, I'm Felicia Gath. I am one of the tech facilitators for the district. I have been in education for almost 24 years. I've been from 
probably every end of the spectrum from a classroom teacher to an instructional specialist to a district instructional specialist and also in administration. And now I found my home in ed tech. Hello, everyone. My name is Angelica Johnson Smith. I am also an instructional technology facilitator here within the district. This is my 20th year in education in the parish, and I am so excited to continue to support teachers in learning and integrating technology into the curriculum. Hello, everyone. I am Mrs. Bannister, and this is my first year as technology facilitator in our district. I had been teaching for more than 20 years. I am excited to be with you this year. Hi, my name is Melinda Bailey, and I am an instructional technology facilitator with EBR. Uh, this is my first year in the EBR parish. However, I've taught for 12 years, or I've been in education for 12 years, um, primarily as a high school French teacher, but I've also been a technology coach in another district. Hello, everyone. My name is Sahara Haney, and I serve as the coordinator of an instructional technology. I have been in education for 10 years where I taught fourth and fifth grade gifted English and social studies, as well as sixth and seventh grade English. I'm super excited to be here today. Hello, everyone. It's your host, Techie Nikki, Nikki Washington. I'm excited to be here, of course. This is my year 15 of tech, of teaching, not technology, but it is year 15 of technology because I've been doing it since day one, but this is year 15 for me, and I'm excited to continue these years with EBR. Hello, guys. My name is Shara Coates. I am a 14-year educator. I'm excited to be a um, technology facilitator. I ended teaching pre-K. Thank you. And I am Brittany Bush Davenport. Um, this is my 15th year in education and I am just finishing up my first full year as a technology facilitator here in EBR. I am like everyone else, very excited to be here. I have taught third and fifth grade and I've also taught STEM. Okay, so now let's get into our actual tech talk for this episode. We wanted our first segment to be about the time that we, the EdTech team, actually fell in love with technology in the classroom. I'll go first. So I kind of cheated with my falling in love with technology because I actually didn't graduate in education. I graduated in computer information systems. So when I got my alternative certification, of course, I was looking for ways to put technology into my classroom and there was none. So I was like, oh my God, I have to go and find ways for these students to incorporate technology into their lessons because we can't just do paper and pencil all day. So I taught fifth grade and my favorite thing was choice boards. So I always had my students to create some type of flyer or brochure using Microsoft Publisher as one of their choices. And they loved it. And of course, I loved it. It was amazing to watch the creativity that the students have. And as I continued my years in education, it was amazing to watch as that type of creativity, were, um, it evolved. It evolved as technology evolved. Brittany, I can really relate to what you just said because I feel like I should have went in computer information systems, but I didn't because I actually know a lot about computers, like to dissect them, learn things about it. But my first time that I actually fell in love with it, it taking my classroom was when I walked into my first classroom straight from student teaching first day and I looked around didn't see anything. All I saw was an overhead projector. And I remember my mom using it. I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, okay, that's not going to work for me. Then I noticed a projector and I had a projector screen. So I had to go back to the table. I said, okay, that's not going to work for me and my kids. They're going to be bored. I like to engage and interact with them fresh out, the, out of student teaching. I know that I needed, I knew that I needed to engage them. So I went on eBay and I purchased an active slate. I know you guys remember those active slates with a pen. And we utilized that until we were able to get those boards, something in our room to engage my students. And so my students actually got to learn hand eye coordination as well with using those slates because if you know then you know those slates you have to have some hand eye coordination to get those slates going but the students enjoyed it I was able to have them pass the slate around interact right on the board and I was able to create all those fancy flip charts how many teachers are out there still making those wonderful active inspire flip charts that's when my flip chart making days came people used to ask me would you pay I'll pay you no I can't do that 
But actually, that's when I actually fell in love with technology when I walked into a room and I had no technology. So I had to come up with some creative ways to get it and make sure my students are engaged. And I'm doing my best every day to make sure we turn something, we make something out of nothing. So that's when I fell in love with tech. Nikki, I am in the same boat. So I've always been a lover of technology. If I was not in education, I would have graduated in graphic arts because I love that field of work. Um, but when I did graduate from undergrad in education in 2011, it was a really good time because I was able to experience life before tech in the classroom and then life with tech in the classroom. And so when I got my first teaching job, it was at a local middle school. We were in a legit tech desert. We had no money, no technology. We had these old kind of cranky looking overhead projectors and those pull down screens, no active boards. We didn't have panels, no projectors. It was a legit y'all tech desert. So a coworker, cause she knew I was a new teacher and she knew that I wanted to have something in my classroom to help engage my students, told me about Donors Choose and that changed the game. I was able to hop on there, ask for classroom books because I'm, I'm I was an ELA teacher so I wanted to expand my classroom library but then I was also able to ask for tablets these little small personal devices for all of my students it just really allowed me to get all the things for my kids and not have to worry about not having any tech in my classroom to engage them as well as to enhance my lessons so that is when I fell in love with technology Yes, Sahara, I can absolutely agree that those one-to-one -one devices are life-changing. And I remember it was about 2009, and it was a cool fall day when my principal rolled in um, an active board in a box with some active votes. I was so excited. At first, I was like, are, are we giving the kids remotes? What is this for? But when I tell you it opened a new way of learning and collaboration for my students, as well as myself, it made me so excited to come in and develop these lessons and to teach those lessons to the students. And it also allowed the students to become peer teachers to their to the peers in their classroom. And it just made me, um, I think it made me a better teacher. Um, I also was like you, I was there before technology became a big thing in the classroom. I remember changing transparency slides on the overhead projector, kind of like Nikki's mom and writing with those Visa B markers. But when that active board came in along with my uh, document cam, it changed the game. I can agree with Angelica on the Promethean board. I totally was able to watch my circle time transform. Like it went from being traditional and boring to super fun and engaging. And a lot of times when you teach like the lower grades, like your pre-K and your kinder, a lot of people won't give you the newest technology because they feel you don't need it. But like in, in like allowing the kids to actually be hands-on and do a lot of the things with like the flip charts and stuff it allows to help them for a better learning so they're able to do it and really understand yes that is true with me char and angelica the first time i had my active board in my classroom it was amazing i started creating flip charts for my lessons each day and my teaching and learning environment became more engaging and effective I was able to present my lessons more interestingly and quicker. I love my active board. Well, I guess I'm the dinosaur of the group because when you think about technology, when I was in the classroom or when I actually started in the classroom, we were still using ditto machines where you would get all the ink on your hands and everything. Uh, and so we progressed from that to the overhead projector and the Elmo. Uh, and I'm sure some of you all probably all can still relate to this, having those five uh, computers in your classroom where you had to rotate your students uh, from computer to computer during your uh, center time. So uh, I was not fortunate enough to have all of the great gadgets that you all have right now. So I fell in love with technology once I was actually out of the classroom and I was in a different role as a uh, literacy specialist and so I was able to kind of support teachers and help them um, with technology that way but I wish I had access to the things that you all have access to now because it would have made my life so much easier. Uh, people always compliment me on uh, my print but I print so well because I taught second grade 
and I come from the age when everything was handwritten. So all of my anchor charts were handwritten. And so I got a lot, a lot of practice with uh, writing correctly. So I fell in love with technology and I still am falling in love with technology. I can identify with that as well, Ms. Gath, because I didn't have that much technology when I first started teaching in 2009. Um, I think there was a cart of first generation iPads that somehow, some way I scrounged and was able to use, um, but they didn't work well the whole time. So what I did when I first started teaching was uh, use bring your own device and ask students to contribute to class using their phones. Um, so I can remember towards the beginning of my career doing, um, using Twitter to teach a lesson on, I think it was French weather phrases, and we had a hashtag and we were tweeting another class um, across the state. So the students were interacting with one another using Twitterfall, um, a site which is no longer active. Um, but at the beginning of my career, I fell in love with technology because I was teaching between two high schools. So I found it very useful to save things uh, to Dropbox. So that way I could access it regardless of which school I was at or if it was saved on my teacher drive or I was at home. Um, so I really fell in love with the accessibility of technology and that I had so many students that had their own device that could text before, like before smartphones, if we can remember that far back. Uh, it's really about accessibility and using what you have available. Um, and that's why I fell in love with technology. It's so interesting to hear the different stories and how technology has actually changed throughout the years. And we can see a progression and how technology continues to change and it will continue to change. It will never say the stay the same as you can hear from the different perspectives from everyone on the team. Technology is here to stay. It's just gonna get better and better with time. So thanks for sh sharing your story on how you fell in love with ed tech in your classroom. So that's it for today's show. If you're listening to us on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, check us out on our Google podcast. If you have an Android, and if you're on Apple, an Apple iOS device, then check us out on Apple Podcasts. Yes, we are official. We're on those platforms as well. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram at EBR Ed Tech and Twitter at Ed Tech EBR. Tell us about when you first fell in love with Ed Tech by tweeting us or commenting on our Instagram post. And you never know, you may win a prize. We may send you something. You never know. We may surprise you. So stay up to date with us. Follow us on all those platforms and stay tuned for the next episode. We really hope you enjoyed this first segment of Technically Speaking. Be sure to tune in every other week and talk techie with us.